Good evening, everyone. Johann Jose Pinto was born in early February of 2003 to nurturing parents, Rui Pinto and Vanessa Cardozo. His childhood years were spent with his parents, grandparents and younger brother Ethan at their picturesque house in Beti on the banks of the Mandovi. Johan commenced his early schooling at the stimulating environment of Nisha School in Porvori before enrolling in Don Bosco High School from where he took his secondary school examination, scoring high percentages in all subjects. He studied for his 12th science from the tough and challenging Mustifund Aryan Academy and is currently pursuing undergraduate studies at Velour's Institute of Technology for a degree in mechanical engineering while also minoring in computer science. Johan's hobbies include collecting rare stamps and coins, as well as the creative study and installation of planted aquariums. Rui and Vanessa spared no effort in nurturing their sons to excel in academics, culture, and sports. Johan is a champion competitive swimmer and has represented Goa six times in national events. An ardent pupil of solo violin, he has completed several examinations of Trinity College of Music, London. In his pre-teens, Johan and other close friends enrolled in a beginner's bridge course during Diwali vacations. He had played a bit of chess before, but was captivated with the nuances of this cerebral card game. His approach to learning better bridge was singular and dedicated. He read books, used available software, trawled the internet for information, practiced and questioned constantly. His efforts paid off when he was selected to be a member of the under 15 India team. In August of 2018, he traveled with the Indian youth contingent to Wujiang in the Jiangsu province west of Shanghai to participate in the 17th World Youth Team Championships, where he acquitted himself admirably. This was his maiden national cap, and I am in no doubt that he will be the recipient of more in years to come. I am indeed proud to call forward and present to you a youth icon of Goa, Johan Pinto. Thank you, Dion. Good evening, everyone. Life is like a game of bridge. The hand you are dealt with represents determinism. The way you play it is free will. Bridge is derived from the 17th century card game whist, which was in vogue among the English nobility of the time. As time progressed, various games were derived from bridge across the world. And then again, during the Great Depression in the 1930s, it was brought back as a game families played in their homes. In India too, we had quite a few players during the freedom struggle who used bridge to explain various views of life. Mahatma Gandhi was a keen bridge player who used the game to explain the difference between karma, the hand you are dealt, and dharma, what you do with it. Which is true, not just in bridge, but in life too. Bridge consists of a deck of 52 cards, which is divided into four each of 30 cards, spades, hearts, and diamonds. The ace is the strongest card in the deck, followed by the king, 
Queen and all the way to the tomb. He's playing for players and he's a healing partnership. The players are from the north south, which is one way and playing in east west, which is the other way. Each player is there thirteen cards and four players and each one play one way. Is known as a trick. Usually, whoever plays the highest number wins the trick. So, we have to as many tricks as possible. It's played in boards of approximately seven minutes. The game which takes place before the player cards is a conversation between four players. What happens without a single word or gesture between them? The purpose of bidding is to decide how many tricks each pair will attempt to make when auction, and also decide the trumps. The pair that wins the auction has to fulfill the number of tricks decided by them in the bidding, while the player should prepare them for doing so. Bidding is like creating a blueprint of the game, while hand play is the actual construction of it. The winner of the bidding becomes the declarer, and he decides the course of action for the game. His partner is referred to as the dummy and has to lay his cards on the table for everyone to see. The pair that loses the bidding now has to prevent the declarer from making his contract. I feel extremely fortunate to have parents who encouraged me to learn this game. Though I had played quite a few card games till the age of 14, bridge came as a breath of fresh air, as it pushed me to use both my strategic side while also bringing out my creative style of play. My first tournament was the Sunday Weekly at Club Caspedias, which was a great experience as my partner and I had to try to perform well among a group of bridge players who had quite the number of tricks in their bag. From then on, it was no looking back. My coach, Dion Menezes, continuously taught me new bids, plays, and gave an in-depth study of the game. And after going through a number of complicated deals and learning to master them, the following year, I represented the country in the World Youth Championships in Wuxiang, China. It was fantastic representing my country at the world level. And though we didn't perform up to our expectations, it was a lesson for all future tournaments. The following year, I was selected once again for the Indian contingent to Croatia. But I had to take a miss as I was preparing for my 12th examinations. It is important to develop a great partnership with your partner in bridge as it not only helps with the results of your play, but also results in a lifelong friendship. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates are friends and have been bridge partners for quite a few years. And Buffett has famously said, bridge is such a, such a sensational game that I wouldn't mind being in jail if I had three cellmates who were decent bridge players. Mahatma Gandhi and Sardar Patel had actually done just that. Their banter while playing bridge, even while in prison, led to a legendary lifelong partnership that began on the bridge table. Bridge is a game that provides you with benefits all throughout your life. The earlier you begin it, the more fun you will have. But you can learn the game even when you are 90 years old. Though this game is constantly teaching you new life lessons, I believe that the most important lesson that Bridge teaches you is to stay in the present. There have been times when I've lost focus and even tournaments in the past, just because I let one bad deal influence the others. This Bridge lesson 
has not only improved the way I play bridge, but also the way I play the game of life. By constantly staying in the moment, I don't allow previous failures or future aspirations to bog me down, but instead work towards succeeding at my current tasks to the best of my ability. Software and computer programs have beaten human beings in chess in 1997, poker a few years ago, but is nowhere near beating an expert bridge player. Why is this, you may be asking yourself. It's quite simple. Unlike chess, which has a majority of strategy, bridge uses both strategic and creative thinking. Thus, enabling you to use both the right and left sides of your brain, keeping you completely stimulated throughout the game. Bridge assists you in boosting your focus and increasing your concentration levels. A credible UK study has found that students who play bridge do well not only in the qualitative subjects of maths and science, but also in the softer subjects of languages and art. This is because it brings focus and mindfulness. It is a known fact among the bridge fraternity that this game postpones the aging of the brain and prevents diseases such as Alzheimer's and dementia. What is not known is that bridge also boosts your Im immune system. Professor Mary Ann Diamond a few years ago did a study in which she took blood samples of bridge players before and after the game and found that a substantial increase in the presence of T cells in their blood samples after the game. T cells is what fights diseases and adds to your immunity. It also helps you to delve deeply into situations, adapt to changing scenarios and pivot to plan B just in case your first plan doesn't go smoothly. Believe it or not, but in the seven minutes that you play each bridge hand, you have to take approximately 10 to 20 important decisions that can change whether you succeed or fail in your contract. It enables partnership aspects of cooperation, communication, trust, and patience which will help you as you move further in life. It is an extremely therapeutic game for senior citizens as they approach the latter stages of your life, as it gives them a chance to have meaningful interactions and also keeping their minds constantly in sync with the way the game is going. If you speak to any HR manager today, he has two cribs, one, the youth of today are extremely affluent with the current technological advances, but they are poor in person-to-person -person communications. Bridge is all about face-to-face -face with your partner and also face-to-face -face against your opponents, thus promoting social interaction and also helping with your communication skills. Secondly, the new job aspirants including MBAs, just can't or won't take decisions. That is, they lack responsibility. They will either push, push the decision up to their boss or down to their subordinate. But in rest, retrospect, you cannot blame them. They are not trained to distill information nor analyze it because our education system still rewards reproduction from the textbook learning by rote, which aren't exactly the skills required in the world today. I think the time has come where India moves to a case-based system on study, in which a game like Bridge is incorporated in a student's education. China today is an economic giant only because Deng Xiaoping, the supreme leader at the time, introduced Bridge in the schools and colleges in the 1980s. And following that, China took off in the 1990s. In the early 2000s, 
countries such as USA, UK, Canada, Norway, and Holland have completely incorporated bridge in the education system, thus leading to a boost in the level of their CEOs and representatives. Today, if you look across the world, some of the major industry giants of our time include bridge players. Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway, Bill Gates of Microsoft, Steve Wozniak of Apple, Viji Bangur of Sri Cement, and in 2016, the chairman of HDFC met with the chairman of ICICI Lombard for a monthly tournament in Mumbai. Indian Asia's richest man, Michael Bambang Hartono, clinched a bronze at the, at the 2018 Asian Games. And when asked to speak about his win, he said, if you want to be a good businessman or a good leader, then play bridge. And that this is a game of decision making. You gather information, analyze it, and make a decision. Today, most parents in India have a misconception in which they perceive all card games to be gambling. I'm here to set right that notion and say that bridge is purely based on skill and analytical reasoning, probability based problem solving and creativity. The best way to explain this is through the example of tournament bridge. Here, the same deal is played on all the tables and thus your score is compared to each and every bridge pair across the room. Thus making your result based purely on skill and not on luck. Today, the game of bridge has advanced to a huge level from where it started in England in the early 1600s. Though each country may follow a different style of bridge, and even though every player may have their own creative way of bidding and hand play, we are all united by a common syntax. In recent years, with the creation of online platforms, such as BridgeBase Online, every bridge player is able to interact and play with anyone from across the world, thus leading to unity of players globally. I urge each and every one of you present here today to try out this game. Whether you are 18 years old like me or 90, it doesn't matter. Because the benefits that Bridge will provide you throughout your life will make it the biggest feather in your cap. So here are a few pictures of how the game is played. So first here is the bridge table. So while you start learning bridge initially, you will just have a plain basic table without the screen in the middle. And as you can see, you will see two pairs. One is north, south and east, west. Once you start moving towards tournament bridge to prevent any gestures or conversation among the players, they start to put a screen in between. So you will only be able to view your opponents. So the next thing which you will get at your table are the bridge boards. So the bridge boards have four, have four parts where the cards go in and they are marked north, south and east and west. So everyone can know which one are their cards. Initially, you can just deal the cards and start playing. But then again, once, once you start moving to tournament bridge, you get pre-dealt hands. And the same board again is played across the full tournament so that, you, so that your score is compared to each and every pair in the room. So here, as you can see, it's not based on your based on luck that this happened only at your table. It, it can also happen at another person's table, thus showing you that it requires skill for everyone to get the same score. So during the auction, which is the bidding, people use the bidding, bridge players use the bidding box. So the bidding box are the cards which you use to communicate with your partner. 
Now, each of these bids will have some sort of meaning, which will be determined between your partner and yourself. Every bridge player can use these cards for some specific meaning, and it can vary from player to player. It's a predetermined thing which you have already agreed upon before you start playing with your partner. After the bidding is completed, the winners of the bidding become the declarer and his partner becomes the dummy. Usually while, when the opponents lead the first card, the dummy lays his cards on the table. So it, with this, everyone can see this player's cards, the opponents as well as the declarers. So then, so then during the full deal, his cards remain on the table and the declarer has to manage his own cards as well as the dummy's cards. That are the, those are his partners. In this situation, he has to try and make the contract which he has agreed upon during the bidding. His opponents, on the, on the other hand, have to try and prevent him from making this contract. They have to see what their own cards are, look at how the bidding occurred, look at the cards the dummy has, the, the dummy has put down on the table and accordingly decide on what should be their course of action. So as I said, during the play, you have to take a number of decisions according to what card you should play. Because just one mistake of playing the wrong card can lead to either you not making the contract or you making the contract. Last picture I have here is a bridge tournament. So as you can see in a bridge tournament, there are a number of tables in a hall. Here you can see that all these tables now in the bridge tournament uh, will be playing the same boards. So at the end of the tournament, your score is compared to each and every one of the tables here in the, here in the hall. So you have, to see, you have to see the skill which you use and whether you've reached the correct contract, played the deal in the correct way and hence made the correct and hence have gotten the correct score. So this leads to your score now being compared to each and every one in the hall. And in the end, and in the end, your final result will not only be based on your performance, but on each and every one present in the hall. Yep, uh, that's that's all. I can ask me questions now. Yeah. Uh, so in the last two years, because of COVID-19, a lot of bridge player players have been unable to meet each other personally. I've, this has not only been with respect to bridge, but with respect to all walks of life. They have been stuck at home, unable to probably reach their, uh, reach their workplace, go to school and various places. So now we have, they have opened a number of players have now shifted to the online platform of BridgeBase Online. Using BridgeBase Online, you can not only play with partners that you have, you have in Goa or probably in India, you can also interact with players from across the world. So this, doesn't, this allows you to see the way people play across the world, what sort of bids, what sort of style of play do they use. Then you can also compete against players of the world to see whether your performance matches up to theirs whether you have to improve in certain ways. So that is one plus point of COVID that it's allowed us to still continue playing bridge, but playing bridge against a number of players. I think someone asked me a question, uh, which on bridge online bridge site. So the bridge site is bridge base online. So on bridge base online, you have various uh, forms in which you can play. So in bridge base online, there are various forms which you can play. Number one is casual, which a number of people play on. Then you have weekly, daily, monthly tournaments, which happen at a certain time, which are usually a majority of them are free, but some you probably have to pay for. Then you also have a, have a system called bridge master, which allows you to play deals, which have already been set. And then at the end of the deal, if you're unable to get the solution, They'll, try, they'll show you the solution. If I'm not mistaken, I, I'm not, I've never used the system of BP points, 
but uh, i think at the other points that you accumulate while you play tournaments on bbo i think the tournaments which are organized and the uh, and the prizes are given in the form of bb points but i've uh, never used that system before okay so the current active networks in goa is the one at club gaspidais which every which uh, about 12 about uh, 6 to 12 people meet every day from monday to friday at club gaspidais and they play a few deals and the other one which i know is at saligaon which i also come to sometimes and there are about four of us right now but i know there are another four people who have also started to learn the game so hopefully that number will soon increase as time progresses and there's a tournament which will also be held in the following month it's going to be our first tournament i think so after covid and those are the only two networks currently as time has progressed from the 70s 80s and the 90s the number of people who play bridge has declined uh, in the 90s in the, there used to be at least 100 players in goa and now it's probably declined to probably only 25 to 30 who still play active bridge there are a number of players who know the game but uh, a bit but uh, refuse to come to the clubs to play along with the others uh, i i do not train bridge players i myself i'm still in training the bidding is the bidding working step wise is a bit technical to explain right now but uh, once if you do start learning the game it will probably be one of the further steps your first you will first learn to play a bit more of a basic level of bridge and then as you progress in the game you start to learn how the bidding works what should be the bids you use to explain to your partner your hand and uh, those sort of concepts i did not have any difficulties while starting the game that uh, i started off when i was in 9th standard my maths and my probability background was strong i had played certain of the local certain local games such as seven hands and mindy coot so i knew a certain i knew a basic level of it but i but as you learn the game then you start to understand the concepts of how in mindy coot while you're playing you decide trumps but then in bridge you have this concept of bidding which is an auction before the game in which you can converse with your partner using the bidding box and the cards present to explain to your partner what is your hand and then using the information your partner and you or your opponents can decide whether they have the points and various other things to uh, secure the contract or win the bidding and then try to fulfill their contract the image of bridge among the uh, i think uh, my partner and i that's cameron menezes and i are the only right i'm not too sure of any other kids who are learning the game but i know that dion was training some people last year and the year before that to learn the game I, he could probably speak about that because i'm not too sure of the bridge among the youth today uh, dion are you present no he is left okay okay so the bridge among the youth today i i would say probably it's slow because parents have this idea set in their head that it's gambling which i think so should change if you compare games if you say games like poker rum if you go to games like poker and rummy yes they are gambling they are based on luck on the other hand bridge you are looking the cards as the sort of a form of probability you are using them as is you are using them and you are using your creative you are using your analytical side you are using strategy you are using various things to try and play the game you are not only depending on what cards you have in your hand you are also depending on the information in your brain your creative side to play it so i i would say that is the current thing which is holding the youth back from starting oh interest i i would say the second point is is that the youth themselves are laxed that they do not want to take the first step towards learning the game if the youth themselves come forward the bridge players in goa have already pushed this idea that the youth should come we've 
I know that uh, Gerard and people in Panjim, such as Dion, have expressed their views and have asked the youth to start playing, but they are unwilling to take that first step. If the youth take that first step, the resources are already present. You have a great number of bridge players in Goa today who can teach you the game. And today also with the number of resources available online, you can learn from someone anywhere from India as well. So that is the second point. I didn't get your last question. Is it possible to have? Hello, uh, Frederick? Uh, yeah, they can unmute themselves and ask. Yeah, okay. Whoever wants to ask me a question can ask. No, could we, to build up uh, links now, is it possible to have some kind of directory or e directly at least of uh, bridge players in Goa, you know, so that, or maybe some online, uh, even some online reference point where people can find it? Uh, that is possible, but it, the thing is, to create the directory, we first have to have those many number of players, right? So right now, we just have about 25-30 active players. There are much more players who probably know the game, played the game in their youth, which is in the 70s and 80s. Of course, back then, it was a different form of play. It was slightly different sort of bidding, style of play and everything. But right now, if the number of players start to increase, then we can form the directory or e-directory of bridge players. The old, uh, the thing is right. No, Johan, why I was asking now is because it seems to be a chicken and egg situation. Correct. So those who are interested in playing don't know where it is played. And those who are already playing, don't know who the potential players are because there are many people who are resettled in Goa, retirees, you know, uh, people who are settled here who are bridge players, but that connection doesn't seem to be happening. As of now, for us at Saligao, yes. it is one way of keeping our club alive, you know. See, as long as we had bridge players coming daily, they were the pillars of our club in our youth when, when I was a yes. young man. Okay. Yes. So, so in the 70s and 60s and all that. But uh, after, because they are daily uh, daily uh, arrivals. But after that, you know, we need them badly. That's my point. <laughs> I I know of one thing that Gerard, Mr. Gerard, Mr. Gerard Delaney has put his ideas forward just before COVID, and I guess to his bad luck, COVID hit and everyone moved home back home. Now with uh, everything starting to reopen back again, I know that he is trying. He has uh, uh, sent around flyers and posts to ask people to join this game again. Not only the youth, but as you mentioned, the people who also played it back in the 60s or 70s. But the thing is, I, I know if, uh, Gerard was explaining to me this uh, last time we met, that he himself knows almost 30 players in Tadikao who currently play this game. He's continuously encouraged them to come to the club, to get back into the game, learn what the newer skills are which have come into the game. But they are refusing to come. So it, it may be mentioned that I'm, it's probably, yes, a uh, chicken game at the moment. But I know that we have, that Gerard has put the idea forward of all these senior players coming back into it, learning the new skills, the new bidding styles, hand plays that have come into the game. But they have refused to come till now. Hopefully, they do start coming in the future. But till now, there's not been any uh, sign of them. Is there anyone here today who is probably a bridge player or who is interested in learning bridge now? I know, uh, the thing was, I mean, I remember I was shy when I was <laughs> initially learning the game. So you can always even message me on WhatsApp if you feel like learning the game. I probably won't teach as yet because I myself am in the learning process still. But I know quite a few players today who are happy to teach this game since it's almost a dying game, especially in Goa. Is uh, Gerard present in the meeting? Gerard, are you there?
may be someone who has experience with it at some other level can also make their uh, point. Is it true that the whole Fato Causeway has collapsed? Ma'am, your voice is not audible clearly. Can you just type the question in the chat box? So one. No, no, no. Go up earlier. That, that. Yeah, yeah, that. I guess she's probably talking to someone else. Yeah. So another point which I thought I would bring up is at uh, from this age of 15 to 18 i have now played with people probably also double my age triple my age and since the average bridge age you could say today the average age of people playing bridge today is almost 45 plus i feel i'm lucky to play against these players who have had quite a number of years of bridge because that has given me the sort of experience that i need when i play tournaments Today in Goa itself, most of the players I play against are not even 45 plus, but actually even 60 plus. But the thing is, they've been playing bridge for so many years that they have that experience under them. They have that experience, which allows me to learn from them, learn probably from their mistakes, which they had when they were playing and use that sort of experience at such a young age to play. And also I have to speak about the mental growth. I probably didn't emphasize as much on that. That bridge gives you the it's a game probably which you have to use which you have to have also a lot of patience and decision making but when while you are playing each deal the decision making has to you have to be quick and so that for that you need that you do you cannot be tense the whole time you have to learn how to calm your mind to make those decisions quick i think bridge has helped in that not only while playing the game but also in various other things that I have in my class during school, while I I'm, while I swim, in anything that I do in life now, I've had that thing where of keeping myself calm while taking important decisions. Does anyone else have any questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Someone is probably wanting to learn the game now. Well, uh, I don't think anybody has any questions. Uh, okay. So, is it fine if we wind up? Yes, yes, that's good. Okay. Uh, but before that, I would like to thank you so much, Johan, for uh, such a meaningful um, and a very helpful uh, introduction to the game. Most of us probably didn't even know um, the benefits of playing bridge. Uh, you emphasized upon certain points like uh social interaction strengthening communication and teamwork skills and then maintaining uh, mental uh, sharpness boosting immunity of uh, like through many uh, many of your examples we are aware now that um, the game is not about gambling as it is portrayed yeah you cleared that misconception thank you so much about it and uh, looking forward to uh, expand uh, more knowledge about this game uh, in and around Goa. Thank you so Thank much you. for putting light on this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.